So next chapter is antenna. So so far we have discussed about the plane wave transmission line and waveguide, and you have seen that uh, these chapters are uh, very important, and uh, many questions has been asked from these chapters. And uh, before uh, uh, studying the chapter antenna, you have to study the electrostatic and magnetostatic because the some uh, topics uh, like uh, the electric field. intensity or the radiation or the coordinate system you will be required to study this chapter so before studying this chapter you have to study the electrostatic and magnetostatic both so uh, the as i told you the procedure or the approach of this subject would be a coordinate system and the dell operator and then we have to jump directly to the plane wave propagation transmission line and wave guide just uh, not to gain the uh, exact uh, the detail concept about the subject just to gain the maximum marks and uh, here if we are preparing for the uh, competitive exam so we should not bother about the detail concept uh, we should be uh, bothering about the maximum marks because at the end uh, the interviewer will see your marks they will not judge you by the concept detail concept because uh, they will when they will take the interview they will ask you the basic question not the detailing one so and uh, nobody will uh, say uh, the favorite subject as emt as you know that in interview very few students might say that they are having the favorite subjects the emt and the communication because uh, they find the difficulties in the detailing of that subject so that's why uh, you don't need to worry about the detailing of the each chapter and each subject but there should be few subjects which should be very very good for your interview so uh, these can be a basic subjects and uh, we are saying that uh, uh, the detail concept so uh, as i you know that the antenna is itself is a subject in our semester exams so it is uh, antenna is very vast in itself so uh, the subject antenna is uh, having a very uh, thick book you can say uh, if you will follow the uh, uh, kd prasad the book uh, textbook and the balanis antenna design or theory by balanis so you will see that the uh, a one book is there in in this topic only so uh, we have to cover only the few uh, topics which is uh, important for our gate exam and uh, uh, how do we decide then which are the topics which is important for gate exam so for that uh, what we have done is uh, we have analyzed the previous year papers and uh, according to the previous year question paper the question the asked from the topics that topics we are covering here okay so there may be a few uh, different topics that might not covered in this chapter but uh, uh, you should not again uh, worry about that topics because there is very 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 less chance to ask the question from there and uh, if they ask then nobody will be able to solve uh, you can say in all over the india so the chapter antenna is starting from some basics that is the introduction of the antenna and uh, i have written the few points about the antenna so you can note it down and i am reading that uh, points and uh, the first point is an antenna is a source or a radiator of electromagnetic wave so actually when we generate the electromagnetic wave or uh, by the transmission line when we transmit we want to transmit some signal then uh, in the free space we required an electromagnetic wave so when we transmit the electromagnetic wave so we should require some system and that is a antenna so the antenna is actually a source or radiator of electromagnetic wave now the second point is an antenna is a transducer which convert the voltage or current wave into electromagnetic wave and vice versa so if you are in the transmitter side then with the help of the transmission line you will transmit the voltage or current wave and this voltage or current wave is is traveling through the free space so is the in the free space we should have a electromagnetic wave so the, what is the purpose of the antenna so the purpose of the antenna is to convert that voltage or current wave in the form of electromagnetic wave so that's why we say that this electromagnetic uh, antenna is a transducer because the transducer converts the one form of energy to another form so it is converting a voltage or current wave 
into an electromagnetic wave in the transmitter side and when we talk about the receiver side so you will receive the electromagnetic wave with the help of antenna receiving antenna and with the help of the transmission line you will uh, deliver it to the load so the, the load can be anything like tv so in the dish tv a uh, dish antenna you will receive the electromagnetic wave and with the help of the transmission line you will uh, uh, deliver it to the television so you can see the output on the picture that is picture tube of the tv right so that's why uh, we have written the vice versa because at the receiver side the antenna purpose is to convert the electromagnetic wave into a voltage or current wave now the third point is antenna is an impedance matching device between the transmission line and the surrounding medium so uh, because the maximum uh, power or you can say maximum uh, input whatever we are giving to the antenna that should be radiated by the antenna so for that the um, impedance should be perfectly matched so we have we know from the transmission line concept that for the maximum power transfer the characteristic impedance of the line should be matched with the load impedance of the uh, load impedance and connected to the output of the transmission line so here also we are having a impedance of the medium and impedance of the antenna so or the transmission line so it should be match between the transmission line and the surrounding medium okay so this is our third point now the fourth point is antenna may be a piece of conducting material in the form of wire or rod or any other shape with excitation until you give the excitation to the antenna it will not radiate so antenna should be a piece of conducting wire so a piece of conducting wire never radiates but it radiates when you excite it and that conducting material can be a form of wire it can be a form of rod and of any other shape but with excitation and if i ask you about the basic equation of the radiation so this is l di upon dt is equal to q into dv upon dt so here l di by dt it seems like that is nothing but the voltage across the inductor but it is not like that here the l di by dt means the l is the length of the wire length of the conducting wire which you are going to use and di upon dt is the i is the current here so the current changing with respect to the time so change in current with respect to time and the q is nothing but the charge and dv upon dt here v is the velocity and if you differentiate the velocity you will get the acceleration so that is nothing but the acceleration dv by dt is acceleration or you can say that this q dv upon dt it shows the accelerated charge it is a accelerated charge so this equation shows that the current change with uh, the change in current with respect to time and accelerated charge radiates you can write here the uh, change in current and accelerated charge radiates so this equation shows that change in current and accelerated charge radiates now what are the different conditions of radiation so there are few conditions by which the conducting material can radiate so i have written this conditions so if a charge is moving so if the charge is moving only with a uniform velocity there will be no radiation from the conducting wire so there is no radiation if the charge is moving with a uniform velocity there is no radiation if the wire is straight or infinitely extended now the second point about the radiation is if the charge is moving with uniform velocity if it is moving with uniform velocity there will be radiation if the wire is curved it is bent or terminated by some load or it is having some discontinuity so in this case the simple uh, conducting wire which is bent or curved or discontinuous if the charge is moving with uniform velocity it can radiate in the free space now this is the structure of the antenna so this is the antenna the red line is antenna and this antenna is connected with the transmission line here is the source that is the excitation which we are giving and uh, when it generates the voltage or current wave here here it will generate a voltage or current wave and in the antenna it is converting into electromagnetic wave so this antenna is working as a transducer which is converting a voltage or current wave 
which travels through the transmission line and this voltage or current wave is input to the antenna but at the output of antenna we are having electromagnetic wave so it is converting a voltage or current wave into electromagnetic wave now it is a impedance matching device because it is matching the impedance of this transmission line with the surrounding medium so it is matching the impedance of these two so it is working as a uh, impedance matching device in the transmission line we say it as a quarter wave transformer so if we want to match the impedance of the two different uh, section of the transmission line what we do is we place a quarter wave transformer in between them so we want to match the impedance of surrounding medium and the transmission line so we kept the antenna in between them to match the impedance of these two okay so this is the basic idea and this is made up of the conducting material so this antenna is made up of the conducting material if the conductor is perfect then there will be no loss in the conductor itself and if the conductor is not perfect so there may be a ohmic loss a conduction loss because of the antenna now so these are the two conditions of radiation if the charge is moving with the uniform velocity it will not radiate if the wire is straight or the conducting material is straight it can radiate in the free space if it is bent discontinuous and curved or terminated and there is one more condition of radiation that is if the charge is oscillating in time domain so if the charge is oscillating in the time domain it radiates even if the wire is straight so straight wire can radiate but the uh, charge should be uh, oscillating in time domain okay so these are the few conditions of radiation there may be more conditions of radiation but uh, the which is required of to uh, for your knowledge that i have written here so in the interview if you uh, if the interviewer will ask what is the condition of the radiation you can talk about these uh, three points you can say about the equation of radiation so they will get satisfied with this okay so this is sufficient uh, to give the introduction about the antenna now what are the different type of antenna that we have to study is the basic types of antenna so the basic uh, antenna which we study is a hertz and dipole antenna so this is a hertz and dipole antenna and the second one is the half wave dipole antenna so this hertz and dipole antenna is actually a very very small current element now you know about the current element because i told you that you have to study the magnetostatic first and in the biosavert's law we have studied about the current element the current element is nothing but the product of current and very very small length of conducting wire that is dl i into dl i is the current and dl is the small length of the conducting wire that is called a current element so the very very small length of current element if we use that is known as the hertz and dipole and if we give the excitation to that uh, dipole then it radiates and the excitation should be following this condition that is it should be a uh, oscillating the charge should be oscillating in time domain or there should be accelerated charge and the current that should be changing with respect to time then it will be able to radiate now the similarly for the half wave dipole the half wave dipole as its name suggests the uh, length of the current element or the length of the conducting wire should be half of the wavelength of the signal to be propagated if you want to transmit a uh, wavelength of 1 meter suppose then you have to use the 0.5 meter of half wave dipole and length of the half wave dipole. then it will be called as half wave dipole and similarly the quarter wave monopole this is just one fourth of the wavelength of the signal to be propagated or the small loop antenna the loop antenna is having a very small radius compared to the wavelength of the signal to be propagated that's why its name is small loop because the radius of the loop is very very small compared to the wavelength of the signal to be transmitted so these are the four types of antenna and for each type of antenna we will study about the radiation we will study about the magnetic field equation we will also study about the how much power it radiates now we are having the last point about this introduction part that is the steps to determine the radiation field regardless to the type of antenna how can you determine the uh, radiation field 
in any type of antenna apart from these four types of antenna if you are studying about any other type of antenna then also you can follow these particular steps to determine the radiation field that is the radiation field that means the equation of the electric field and the magnetic field so the first point is select appropriate coordinate system according to the antenna there should be a certain coordinate system so that is why i told you that you have to study the coordinate system as well before studying the antenna because you have to select some appropriate coordinate system and determine the magnetic vector potential so the magnetic vector potential is in the chapter of magnetostatic so that is why the that chapter is important to familiar with these terms and if you will not study then also you can uh, follow this chapter but uh, there may be a some term that uh, you have to assume that uh, it is like that only okay now after getting the magnetic vector potential we are having the relation to get the magnetic field intensity the magnetic field intensity is curl of magnetic vector potential divided by mu naught so this is the curl of magnetic vector potential divided by mu naught and after getting the magnetic field using the maxwell equation determine electric field by using the relation curl of h is equal to j omega epsilon e now how do we get this one so we know that from the ampere's law for the time varying field the curl of h is equal to sigma plus j omega epsilon into e okay sigma plus j omega epsilon in bracket and outside the bracket that is electric field intensity now here there is no term of sigma why it is so because we are considering about the free space okay so we are considering about the free space and in the free space uh, because the electromagnetic wave radiates in free space so this free space is having sigma 0 we have studied in the plane wave propagation the when the plane wave propagates in different medium so when it uh, travels through the free space the sigma is 0 so here the sigma is 0 that's why the ampere's law for time varying field become curl of h is equal to j omega epsilon e and from here you because in the second step we have got the magnetic field intensity so by taking the curl of magnetic field intensity divided by j omega epsilon will give you the electric field so from here you will get the electric field from the second step you will get the magnetic field and in this way you will get the equation of radiation that is the electric field and radi uh, electric field and magnetic field okay so the radiation field we have got now after that we have to find the far field and we will uh, i will discuss you uh, that what is the meaning of this far field and uh, at this point after this point we will see what is the far field what is the near field so after that we will select the far field and at the far field we will calculate the radiated power and average power so the time average power we will calculate the power radiated we will calculate and how do we calculate the power radiated so we know from the plane wave equation that the once you get the average pointing vector that is the average power density you can calculate the radiated power and this radiated power is nothing but the surface integration of time average pointing vector or the power density dot ds and to calculate the time average pointing vector for a complex field or the electric field or magnetic field you can apply 1 by 2 real part of electric field cross the complex conjugate of magnetic field and the direction in the direction of propagation so ar cap so when you do the cross product you will see that here it will be the direction of radiation it is you can write ak also here because when you take the cross product you will get some vector quantity because this is nothing but the vector product so you can ignore it from here also you can ignore it because when you do the cross product you will get automatically the unit vector so 1 by 2 real part of e cross complex conjugate of h this will give you the time average pointing vector and from here the you will get the radiated power so these are the four steps which we will follow for each type of antenna but actually we will derive it for only hertz and dipole and then we will write the direct result for the half wave dipole quarter wave and small loop because the derivation is not important just to uh, uh, understand what are these steps we will derive it only for the hertz and dipole antenna 
so this is the introduction about the antenna now so our next topic is antenna characteristics so in this topic uh, we are going to see about the antenna pattern the radiation efficiency the gain the power gain the directive gain the antenna aperture area and the uh, efficiency so this particular topic is very important uh, in the point of the gate exam because uh, uh, many question has been asked from this topic in the gate so our first characteristics is antenna pattern antenna pattern which is also known as radiation pattern so you can write few points first point is when a specified component of when a specified component of electric field is plotted when the specified component of electric field is plotted it is called field pattern second is when square of electric field is plotted when square of electric field is plotted when square of electric field is plotted it is called the power pattern and third point which you can write is suppose you plot the normalized electric field so the normalized electric field this point is very important so the normalized electric field versus theta for constant phi normalized electric field versus theta for constant phi is called e plane pattern e plane pattern or e plane pattern or the vertical pattern or theta is also known as the elevation angle so that is why we can also write it as elevation pattern and suppose we plot the normalized electric field normalized electric field versus phi for theta is equal to pi by 2 it is called h plane pattern h plane pattern or horizontal pattern horizontal pattern or azimuthal plane pattern and the last point you can write is a antenna pattern a antenna pattern is three dimensional plot of its radiation of its radiation at far field so 
so these all are the important points about the antenna pattern so the very important point is that it is nothing but a e plane pattern what is e plane pattern and what is h plane pattern that is very important if you are plotting a antenna pattern so the plane is very important so the question is asked from that particular point only so if you will see the antenna array you will find that importance of this this is e plane pattern so we will discuss that e plane pattern and for theta is equal to pi by 2 for theta is equal to pi by 2 that means we are in the xy plane so theta is equal to pi by 2 that means xy plane so this xy plane is known as h plane pattern if you draw the pattern in xy plane that in that it is called the h plane pattern and it is nothing but the three dimensional plot of its radiation at far field so because we are considering the far field so these two points are important and we are considering the far field so let's write the radiation equation at far field okay so for hertzian dipole for hertzian dipole at far field the equation of radiation is e theta electric field e theta s is eta i naught dl sin theta e to the power minus j beta r into j beta divided by 4 pi r so at far field the electric field is given by this expression so this is if you want to draw the pattern in e plane then you have to find the normalized electric field so what is the normalized electric field so the normalized electric field normalized value is equal to e theta s the magnitude divided by e theta s and its maximum value magnitude of e theta s and divided by magnitude maximum value of that magnitude and the antenna pattern is also a magnitude plot so if e theta s if i calculate e theta s magnitude only so this is the phase term right so this is nothing but the phase term and this is eta i naught dl sin theta and the phase term so this j is also a phase term this is also a phase term so we can write beta divided by 4 pi r and what is the maximum value of it so the maximum value of it will be when the sin theta is at its maximum value and sin theta maximum value is 1 so the maximum value will be eta i naught dl beta divided by 4 pi r so if i take the ratio and its magnitude what i will get e theta s the normalized value the normalized value is uh, this is eta i naught dl sin theta beta divided by 4 pi r and whole divided by eta i naught dl beta divided by 4 pi r so if you take the ratio of these two so you will get the sin theta only and its magnitude because this is nothing but the magnitude plot so the normalized value is the mod of it mod of sin theta for hertz and dipole this is because of hertz and dipole so if we want to draw it so uh, in e plane pattern uh, e plane then we have written that the normalized electric field so we have got the normalized electric field for hertz and dipole versus theta that means we have to change the value of theta for a constant phi so the value of theta should be varying and the range of the theta we know and let, let us say this is theta and this is sin theta magnitude so if the theta is 0 and uh, this is 45 this is 90 degree and this is uh, 135 and uh, 180 degree okay so this is the value of theta 
So theta equal to 0, you will get 0. At 45, you will get 0 0.707. At 90, you will get the maximum. Here at 135, you will get the negative value, uh, which is 0 0.707 sin 135. Okay. So and the sign is positive in the first, second quadrant and the 180 is 0 again. And uh, from 0 to 180, whatever we will, will, will the get the value, from the 180 to 360 also we will get the same value but with the negative sign and because we are plotting the magnitude and the same value repeats, that is why we only draw for the 0 to 180 degree and the mirror image will be present for the 180 to 360. So, if this is the plane, because we want to draw in E plane, so here we are having the E plane pattern, this is the E plane pattern. So, we are drawing in E plane because we are changing the value of theta. So, for E plane you require to have the value of theta. So, you should have the theta and theta is the angle measured from the z axis. So, there should be one axis which is z because the z if you are drawing the pattern in the E plane then the theta should be varying and to make the theta or to, to make the theta variable you have to uh, one axis as z because the angle measured from the z axis is theta and now here you can write y or x whatever you want to write generally we write y and the x is outside the board. Now this is theta equal to 0 because uh, at the z axis the angle with the z axis will be 0 and as you move away from the z axis the theta is changing so at y this theta is 90 degree. So, here it is theta is equal to 180 degree and here it would be theta is equal to 270 degree and here it is again a 360 degree. Now, at theta equal to 0 the value is 0, so we get the value 0. At theta is equal to 45, so this is the 45, theta is equal to 45 and 135, this is theta is equal to 45 and here we will get 135. So, at 45 we have a point 0 0.707 and at 90 we are having the maximum value which is 1 and at 135 we are having 0 0.707 and at 180 it is again 0. So, we have to make this point, we have to follow this point. So, when we follow this point, we will get the shape like this. So, this is the antenna pattern, this is nothing but antenna pattern. So, similarly, the mirror image we will get. in the negative side as well that is from 180 to 360. So, we get the mirror image like this. So, this will be the pattern, this will be the antenna pattern and the value is same here 1 and 0 0.707, this is 0 0.707 and this is also 0 0.707. So, this is the dumbbell shape curve which is for the hertz and dipole. So, this is the antenna pattern and that is in the E plane. Okay. So, that is very simple. If you want to draw the pattern in E plane, then what you have to do is you have to write the normalized electric field in far field and by changing the value of theta, you can draw the antenna pattern or radiation pattern. So, and for the E plane, the one of the axis should be z. So, we have to keep the z axis and because the angle measured is the from the z axis is theta. Now, if I say where is the antenna placed? So, if I want to keep uh, show the antenna, then the antenna was placed in the origin. The antenna was placed in the origin. This is the antenna. Because the field pattern which we got in case of Hertz and dipole 
this equation we derived when we considered that the hydrogen dipole is placed in the origin. So, it is placed in the origin and the pattern is at any distance r and it is along the z axis. So, this is placed along the z axis. So, we can also call this z axis as the axis of antenna, axis of antenna. Now, if you want to draw the uh, same pattern in H plane, then what will happen? How can we draw the pattern in H plane? So, we can draw the pattern in H plane by just replacing, by just replacing the E theta as normalized value in theta is uh, in this normalized pattern, uh, the theta is replaced by phi and its mod. So, if you want to draw the pattern in H plane, then you have to replace theta by phi. So, now what is phi? So, the phi is known as the azimuthal angle and azimuthal angle is the angle measured from the x axis. So, that is why now you have to consider a plane in which there is one of the axis would be x. So, suppose this is x, then it should be y. As, as I told you that for theta is equal to pi by 2, ok. So, here we had written that in H plane pattern means theta is equal to pi by 2. So, theta is equal to pi by 2 means x y plane. So, whenever you want to draw the pattern in H plane, you have to consider the plane x y. So, this is the plane x y. Now, here the phi is 0 and uh, phi equal to 90, somewhere here it would be 45, here it would be uh, whatever it would be, here it is 135 phi, this is phi and here if you will write this is uh, 225 okay, and this is 315. This is phi is equal to 270, phi is equal to 180 and so on. So, because this is on also sin phi, so the value is at phi equal to 0, it is 0. So, this is 0 and at phi is equal to 45, it is 0 0.707 and at phi equal to 90, it is 1 and it is again a 0 0.707. So, if we draw this. we get the pattern like this. This is again 0 0.707. This is 0 0.707 and this is 0 0.707. This is 1. So, always remember that the maximum value which we get from the radiation pattern is the value 1 because that is the normalized value. This is the normalized pattern which we draw and the maximum value can be 1 because from here if we change the numerator and uh, this is the maximum value. So, if you divide it, so when uh, there will be some angle at which this will be the maximum and we have already divided it by the maximum value. So, the normalized value always has the maximum value as 1. So, here the maximum value is 1 and here also it is 1. Okay. So, this is the pattern in H plane. Remember that the normalized pattern is always having the maximum value 1. So, whenever the maximum or the main lobe is given, that means it is having the maximum amplitude equal to 1 because it is a normalized value. So, when you change the value of phi, there will be some point at which you will get the 1 because it is the ratio of the field divided by its maximum value. So, when you change the value of theta or phi, there will be some point at which you will get the maximum value and you are dividing it by the maximum value. So, the maximum maximum become 1. So, that is the point which is for phi is equal to 90. Now, for the Hudson dipole, we can uh, this from the antenna pattern, we can uh, define two terms which is called half power, half power beam width.
हाफ पावर बीम विथ विच इज कॉल्ड एच पी बी डब्ल्यू हाफ पावर बीम विथ ना वॉट इज हाफ पावर बीम विथ सो हाफ पावर बीम विथ एड्स इट्स नेम सजेस्ट दिस इज द पॉइंट वेयर इफ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द हाफ पावर ओनली नॉट अभी not i am not telling about the beam width right now i am if i call uh, a half power what is does it mean so the meaning of half power is the point or the angle at which the magnitude the power become half okay uh, half of the maximum power so the angle at which the radiation pattern become the half of the maximum power is known as half power and the or we can also say that the angle at which the electric field is 1 upon root 2 times of its maximum value see suppose half power point i want to calculate so this is nothing but the maximum value divided by root 2 and if i want to calculate the power so we have to square it because the electric field is square because we know from the power density or pointing vector the pointing vector is nothing but the power density and power density it shows the e not square upon 2 eta for a lossless medium so e not square that means the square of electric field so if you want to calculate the power of this so you will calculate the square of it so this is 1 by 2 so this is the power peak power divided by 2 so the when the maximum power become half it is called the half power point or you can say the maximum electric field become 1 upon root 2 times that is known as half power point half power beam width uh, now let's write the definition of half power beam width so the half power beam width is right the half power beam width of antenna the half power beam width of antenna is equal to angular width it is the angular width between direction where it is equal to the angular width between direction where radiated field reduces to radiated field reduces to 1 by root 2 of the maximum value of the half of the power the half power beam width of antenna is equal to antenna width between direction where radiated field reduces to 1 upon root 2 of the maximum value of half of the power maximum value of half of the power so this is the maximum value and this is the point where it is half of the value or half of the power and the or you can say that the electric field is 1 upon root 2 times okay so the angular width here is you can define from here and here also so this is the main lobe you have to measure the width beam width in the main lobe so this is the main lobe and if we measure this difference this difference this is the angular width this is the angular width in the main lobe in which this is the point where we are getting the half power and this is the point where we are getting the half power so the angular width between the two half power point the angular width between the two half power point if you want to write in simple words angular width between two half power points in main lobe or maximum radiation is called half power beam width so what is that angular width so from here to here if you measure this this is known as half power beam width and uh, this is 45 this is 135 so the angular width is 90 degree so the half power beam width is 4 hertz and dipole because we have drawn the pattern for hertz and dipole so for 
earths and dipole the half power beam with theta h p b w is 90 degree and similarly for half wave dipole if you draw and calculate for half wave dipole this theta is h p b w is 78 degree so this two angles you can remember this can be directly asked in exam for half power beam weight uh, for half wave dipole and horizon dipole the value is fixed which is 90 degree and 70 degree and for the different values uh, for the different antenna we can have the different result now let's define the next term which is called the half uh, beam width between first null beam width between first null this is beam width between first null it is denoted by b w f n so this is nothing but the uh, angular width between angular width between two nulls in the main lobe angular width between two null in the main lobe so if you see here this is the main lobe so the first null we got for this zero for theta equal to 0 the value is 0 and uh, the second 0 we got for 180 degree. So this angular width, this complete angular width from 0 to 180 degree will be called as beam width between first null, this angle. From 0 to 0, from 0 to 0 it is called the beam width between first null, angular width between 0 to 0, two null points. Okay. So, it is 180 degree from the figure but in practical values we may have some different value as well. So this is the definition of beam width between first null and this is all about the first uh, characteristics that is antenna pattern or radiation pattern. Now we will discuss the second characteristics that is known as the radiation intensity. Okay, So the radiation intensity is very important term again because from the radiation intensity we can directly get the value of half power beam width how why it is so uh, let's we will discuss uh, then you will come to know then how this is related with the power Second point is radiation intensity. So, it is defined as radiation in intensity, it is defined as F theta comma phi denoted by capital F theta comma phi or sometimes u theta comma phi is equal to r square into p average. This is the definition. This is the definition. F theta comma phi or u theta comma phi is r square into p average and we know that this p average is the power density, average power density. So the power density is power per unit area. So R square that means also the meter square. So the area is power per unit, uh, the density is power per unit area. Area is also in meter square, this is also in meter square, this meter square, meter square will get cancelled and we will get the power and hence this U theta comma phi 
is denoting a power pattern. If you will draw u theta comma phi, then it will give you power pattern. So it is related with the power. Okay. So if, uh, for example, if you are having an expression of u theta comma phi as suppose sin theta or sin square theta, okay, and you want to calculate the half power point, suppose it is given in the question u theta comma phi and it is asked that what is the half power point. So, because this u theta comma phi shows the power pattern because it is equal to the power. So, that is why the angle at which the, this become half, the maximum value is 1 only. So, the angle at which this become half is called as half power beam width half power point okay the angle is we get is half power angle okay so when you calculate it then this is sin theta half power is 1 by root 2 and theta half power will be 45 degree and when you uh, cons uh, calculate the angle that is just the twice of it so the twice of it would be 90 degree half power beam width is this is the point where you are getting the maximum value uh, half of the maximum value now next half you will get at some other angle which is 135 and the angle between these is 90 degree so that is nothing but the twice of this half power point so half power beam width is twice of half power angle and from here you can calculate the beam width between fastener also So next is uh, if you are having the radiation intensity then you can also calculate the radiated power because this is related with the power. See. Uh, this time average pointing vector you know because if you are defining a u theta comma phi that means r square p average. So, if you want to calculate the radiated power, the radiated power is equal to integration over the surface and time average pointing vector dot differential surface. This is the formula. Now, if this time average pointing vector is having a magnitude p average and the direction in the direction of radiation and the differential surface in the direction of radiation that is in the direction of r is given as r square sin theta d theta d phi a r cap and if we take the dot product of these two we will get the integration over the surface time average pointing vector into r square and if we take the dot product we will get the sin theta d theta d phi and this r square into p average from the definition of the radiation intensity r square into p average is u theta comma phi. So, we can write integration over the surface u theta comma phi sin theta d theta d phi and this is p radiated. So, the p radiated is calculated from the radiation intensity. So, the difference between the uh, calculation of the power radiated from the time average pointing vector and the radiation intensity is that in case of the radiation intensity we have to consider only sin theta d theta d phi and in case of the uh, time average pointing vector we should have the r square sin theta d theta d phi. Okay, so, if the time average pointing vector is there then r square sin theta d theta d phi should be there and in terms of u theta comma phi there should not be r square in multiplication. Now, if you define the average value of radiation intensity, so the average value of the radiation intensity is radiated power divided by 4 pi, this is the average value.
एवरेज रेडिएशन इंटेंसिटी इज डिफाइंड एज एवरेज रेडिएशन इंटेंसिटी इज डिफाइंड एज रेडिएटेड पावर पर यूनिट सॉलिड एंगल एंड हेंस इट्स यूनिट इज वॉट पर स्टे रेडियन सो द एवरेज रेडिएशन इंटेंसिटी इज एवरेज पावर रेडिएटेड पावर पर यूनिट सॉलिड एंगल एंड वी गेट दिस वैल्यू सॉलिड एंगल इज फोर पाई हाउ डू वी गेट दिस सो इफ यू इंटीग्रेट इट दिस साइन थीटा डी थीटा डी फाइ थीटा इज वेरिंग फ्रॉम जीरो टू पाई एंड फाइ इज वेरिंग फ्रॉम जीरो टू टू पाई सो वेन वी इंटीग्रेट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू फाइव वी गेट टू पाई एंड वेन वी इंटीग्रेट इट टू द साइन थीटा If we integrate the sine theta, we get the minus cos theta, and limit from zero to pi. So this is two pi minus sine common, cos pi minus cos zero. So this is minus two pi and minus two, which is four pi. Hence, we get this value four pi. So the radiated uh, power divided by solid angle is called the average radiation intensity so these are the two characteristics that we have discussed now we will consider the directive gain next characteristics will be directive gain so next is directive gain so third one is directive gain and the directive gain is denoted by G D theta comma phi. So how can we define the directive gain? So it is nothing but it is a measure of it is a measure of concentration of radiated power. Concentration of radiated power in particular direction. in particular direction this is the definition of directive gain and mathematically we can define the directive gain as gd theta comma phi is equal to 4 pi p u theta comma phi divided by u average u theta comma phi divided by u average or we can also write it as the radiated power divided by 4 pi into u theta comma phi okay because the average radiation intensity is defined as the radiated power per unit solid angle so this is the definition of directive gain now this u theta comma phi can be represented as gd theta comma phi we can also represent it by 4 pi this u theta comma phi is defined as r square into average value of the power divided by radiated power so this can be the one formula because uh, in some question it may be asked about the time average pointing vector or the average power density and the directive gain is given to you then you can find the time average pointing vector by using multiplied with radiated power divided by 4 pi r square and also you can relate it with the electric field because the time average pointing vector is e not square divided by 2 eta so this is also one relation from where you can find the electric field suppose the directive gain is given and you have to find the electric field then you can calculate the peak value of electric field from this relation so these are the different relation that you can use according to the question now the next definition is 
directivity next parameter directivity the directivity is nothing but it is the ratio of maximum radiation intensity maximum radiation intensity to the average radiation intensity so it is denoted by d and this is the maximum radiation intensity divided by average radiation intensity so we can write this is 4 pi u max divided by radiated power this is the formula now the directivity for Herzen dipole for Herzen dipole the directivity is defined as uh, the directivity is given by d is equal to okay this is the values fixed so d is equal to 1.5 that you have to remember and for half wave dipole for half wave dipole the directivity is 1.64 and for isotropic antenna it is 1 that directivity is always equal to 1 and there is one more relation of the directivity the directivity is also given by 41253 divided by theta in degree in E plane and theta in degree in H plane. This is another formula of directivity. What is theta E and theta H then? Then theta E is half power beam width in E plane in degree and theta H is half power beam width in H plane in degree. Now for parabolic reflector, suppose another antenna if I am considering for a parabolic reflector, the directivity is 10 lambda upon d whole square. This is the directivity for a parabolic antenna where the lambda is the wavelength of the signal which is to be transmitted and d is the diameter of the antenna. So this is the gain and half power beam width, half power beam width is 70 lambda by d, 70 lambda by d. So these are the two formulas for a parabolic reflector. Half power beam width is uh, given by 70 lambda upon d. D. Again the D is the diameter and that result will give you uh, answer in the, uh, it is in the radian, okay. Because the wavelength, so this is 2 pi upon beta, so the value will be in the radian. Now the next parameter is, fifth one is power gain. and uh, it is denoted by gp theta comma phi and power gain of an antenna accounts for conductor loss conduction loss in antenna
when we consider the the losses in the antenna then we calculate the gain power gain so the power gain actually accounts for the gain uh, losses in the antenna material okay ohmic losses the conduction losses in the antenna material so the formula for this will be suppose this is the antenna suppose this is the antenna now the power given to this antenna is p in and the actual power radiated is p radiated and because of the conduction losses because this is the antenna which is made up of the conductor because of the conduction loss there is some loss which is denoted by pl so here we can write it as this p in is actually the loss power and the radiated power and the loss power is given as i not square into r so i not square divided by 2 into the loss resistance and this is i not square upon 2 into the radiation resistance so we can write this i not square divided by 2 and the loss resistance plus the radiation resistance this is the input power if the antenna is given as the lossless then this loss resistance will be zero the loss resistance is given by l upon 2 pi a l upon 2 pi a root over pi f mu upon sigma this is the loss resistance this is the formula for loss resistance where the l is the length of the dipole where l is length of dipole or the antenna a is radius and f is the frequency sigma is the conductivity and mu and pi you know okay uh now here this term is denoted as the skin resistance skin resistance or the surface resistance which term root over pi f mu upon sigma is also called skin resistance now we were discussing the power gain so what is the power gain so the formula for the power gain would be the power gain gp theta comma phi is nothing but the u theta comma phi divided by input power previously we consider only the radiated power now we are considering the input power so this is the formula for power gain now the next the next one is uh, the radiation efficiency now next we can define the radiation efficiency so what is the radiation efficiency so it is the efficiency of an antenna so how can we define the efficiency so an antenna efficiency is actually a output divided by input so what is the output power and what is the input power so here you can see that in the this particular antenna the output which is radiating is p radiated and the input which is given as p in so the radiation efficiency of an antenna which is our sixth characteristics radiation efficiency radiation efficiency so radiation efficiency is denoted by eta or sometimes ecd this is nothing but the radiated power ratio of radiated power to the input power this is the actual definition now if i 
put this values of radiated power and input power we have just written. So, eta is equal to the radiated power is I naught square upon 2 it depends on the radiation resistance divided by the input power is I naught square upon 2 and loss resistance plus radiation resistance. So, this I naught square by 2 and I naught square by 2 will get cancelled and we get the efficiency, the radiation efficiency. Remember that the radiation efficiency is given by the radiated power divided by the loss resistance. So, radiated resistance divided by the loss resistance plus radiated resistance. So, this is also an a important formula of radiation efficiency. So, now we are having the next parameter which is antenna overall efficiency which we can define as antenna overall efficiency. Here we have considered only the uh, antenna material and it is uh, according to that we consider the efficiency. So, if we calculate the overall efficiency of antenna, so antenna is connected with the transmission line. So, that part we also have to consider that is seventh one which is antenna efficiency. See, if suppose this is the antenna this is the antenna and suppose it is connected with the transmission line somewhere here it is connected with this transmission line like this so this is the transmission line and this is the antenna Now, what will happen? So, when you connect the source in the transmission line, the power will flow from through this transmission line or the voltage will flow from this uh, using this transmission line and uh, whatever will be the voltage or the current you want to transmit or the wave you want to transmit will be input to this antenna. So, if suppose the characteristic impedance of this antenna and the input impedance of this antenna is not matched if this is the input impedance and the load the load of this transmission line is nothing but the input impedance of the antenna this input impedance is considered as the load of this transmission line ok. So, this will be considered as this is the antenna and it is connected as the load. So, this is the load like this and this is the characteristic impedance. So, this Z naught is not equal to Z L or you can write Z in also. So, this Z in is not equal to Z naught then what will happen? The sum part will be reflected back means whatever power you actually want to transmit from the antenna the total power will not go into the input of the antenna because of this mismatch. Suppose you want to transmit a 10 watt, then you will generate a 10 watt power from the source and using the transmission line you will give it to the input of the antenna. But because these are not perfectly matched, the 10 watt will not go into the input of antenna. Some power will be reflected back, suppose 2 watt will be reflected back and 8 watt will be input to the antenna. So, this 8 watt will be radiated by this antenna if this antenna is lossless ok. And if antenna is lossy then again some part will uh, some power will be lost because of the ohmic loss and then the remaining power will be transmitted by the antenna. So, in this case how can we define the efficiency? 
So the efficiency is denoted by now E naught and it is nothing but the radiation efficiency, whatever efficiency we have considered uh, in the antenna material because of the antenna material is denoted by ECD. So we have considered the efficiency of this part that is known as radiation efficiency. Now we have to consider the reflection efficiency as well and this ER, this ER, ER is called the reflection efficiency. and it is equal to 1 minus reflection coefficient square, 1 minus magnitude you can write. We know that uh, how do we get this 1 minus mod gamma square because we have studied in the transmission line and also in the plane wave. The power that is actually transmitted the percentage of power that is transmitted is given by 1 minus mod gamma square and the percentage of power that is reflected is magnitude gamma square. So this is the percentage of power that is transmitted. So that is known as the reflection efficiency. So the overall efficiency become E naught is equal to ECD and in bracket 1 minus magnitude of gamma square. And the overall efficiency is also the ratio of the power gain divided by the directive gain or directivity. This is the actual formula. Whenever you want to calculate the efficiency, you can follow this formula. And suppose in the question it is given only the power gain, only, only the gain only the gain means always we calculate the power gain. So whenever you want to calculate the gain or the power gain, gain or simply power gain, then it is equal to ECD which is the reflection efficiency, 1 minus magnitude of gamma square multiplied with the directivity which is D. So whenever you want to calculate the gain, you use this formula, you will never get confused with the formula. Okay, so when there is no reflection given or when there is no information about the uh, transmission line is given, then always the reflection efficiency as 1. So reflection efficiency will be 1 when we will assume that this is perfectly matched. When this is perfectly matched, then the reflection coefficient will be 0. So this gamma is nothing but, this gamma is nothing but Z in minus Z naught divided by Z in plus Z naught. Okay. So, if it is perfectly matched, the Z in is equal to Z naught, then the reflection coefficient will be 0. When the reflection coefficient will be 0, the reflection efficiency will be 1 and the reflection efficiency will be 1. That means this term is 1. Now, it is ECD into directivity. Okay. And suppose the lossless antenna is given. Lossless antenna, it means that there is no loss in the antenna material itself. If antenna is given as the lossless, so for lossless antenna RL will be 0 and here you can write for lossless antenna, for lossless antenna this RL equal to 0 and when you consider RL equal to 0, this R radiated, R radiated will get cancelled and we get the eta is equal to 1. That is the radiation efficiency is equal to 1. So the radiation efficiency is 1, the reflection efficiency is 1. That means the power gain is equal to directive gain or directivity. So sometimes it is asked about the gain and the gain is equal to the directivity. Sometimes it happens in the numerical. So that is why it is so because the antenna is lossless and also uh, the antenna is lossless and also you can say uh, this is nothing but uh, radiation efficiency uh, lossless. So the uh, radiation efficiency is uh, 1 and uh, reflection efficiency is 1 because the characteristic impedance is matched. So if the gain of uh, the power gain and the directivity is same. So from this formula, the gain and the power gain is same. So from this formula, sometimes uh, the ratio power gain divided by directivity become 1. So the overall efficiency, okay. So the power gain and directivity is 1. That means overall efficiency is 1, okay. 
because we are saying that these all terms are 1. So, in this case the power gain divided by derivativity is also 1. So, power gain and derivativity is 1 that means whatever power you give in the input that will be radiated by the antenna. So, if you give suppose a 10 watt, if Z in is equal to Z naught that it will be 10 watt will be delivered to the antenna and because the loss resistance is 0 there will be no loss and the 10 watt will be delivered uh, by radiated by the antenna. So, if you are giving the 10 watt the radiation power is also 10 watt if two condition is satisfied first the antenna should be lossless and second if it is perfectly matched with the transmission line input impedance is perfectly matched with the characteristic impedance of the transmission line then whatever power you give that will be radiated by the antenna. But if there is some loss then maybe it is perfectly matched with the transmission line but because of the loss present in the antenna some power will be lost in the antenna itself and the total power radiated will not be 10 watt ok. So, remember that whenever you want to calculate the uh, power radiated by the antenna then you have to consider these two efficiency together ok. Now, the eighth property is aperture efficiency, aperture efficiency or aperture area, effective aperture area you can write, effective aperture area. effective aperture area. So, effective aperture area it is defined as it is defined as ratio of power received by antenna to the pointing vector uh, antenna to the average power density which is pointing vector itself average power density of incident wave of incident wave. So, mathematically we can write effective aperture area is denoted by AE which is the power received. So, the power received by antenna is denoted by suppose PR and we have to calculate the average in power density of incident wave. So, average power density P average of incident wave, incident wave. So, this is the effective aperture area. Now, there is one more uh, relation the effective aperture area in terms of the gain lambda square upon 4 pi into the directivity that is the gain only uh, when we consider the losses is 0 then lambda square upon 4 pi into d. If we consider uh, the radiation efficiency reflection efficiency. let us write gain here, then you will understand it more. The gain, if we consider the reflection efficiency and radiation efficiency, we get AE is equal to lambda square upon 4 pi and what I had written, uh, if we have consider the reflection efficiency and the radiation efficiency. So, the reflection efficiency that means the 1 minus magnitude of gamma square 
and the radiation efficiency that means ECD. Then how can we write the gain? So the gain is equal to here ECD 1 minus magnitude of gamma square into directivity. So this will be the formula for the effective aperture area. So if there is no loss in the antenna material that means the radiation efficiency is 1. So this become 1. When there is no mismatch between the uh, transmission line and antenna that means the reflection coefficient is 0. So this is 0. This is 1. So this two term will become 1. Okay. So this formula will be lambda square upon 4 pi into d. So this is the general formula which we consider the gain gain is nothing but ECD 1 minus mod gamma square into D uh, and many times we use the formula that is lambda square upon 4 pi into D. So how it comes? So when we consider the reflection efficiency and the radiation efficiency equal to 1 then the lamp effective aperture area is directly related to the directivity which is lambda square upon 4 pi into D. Okay. So, these all are the characteristics of antenna and these characteristics are very important. So, you should uh, able to understand this particular uh, characteristics, all the 8 characteristics along with the definition and along with the uh, use of uh, this uh, characteristics, how we are considering the losses, how we are considering the uh, efficiency. So, these all things are very important. So next topic is freeze transmission equation. So we use the freeze transmission equation to calculate the received power. Power received at the receiver when there is a communication link, wireless communication link between the transmitting antenna and the received antenna. So uh, for that let us consider a transmitter. So this is the transmitter which is generating some power. and the power that is generated at the transmitter is delivered to the antenna with the help of the transmission line. So we are having a transmission line. This is the transmission line with the help of the transmission line we are delivering the power generated at the transmitter. And now suppose this is antenna. Now at the receiver, this is the receiver, in the receiver there is again a transmission line by which we are delivering the received power to the load. So we have to calculate the power delivered to the load, how much power is delivered to this load which is having an impedance ZL and the characteristic impedance of this is Z0, the characteristic impedance of this is Z0, the input impedance of this antenna is Z in. This is the transmitting antenna which is having again GT, effective aperture area AET and the unit vector of the electric field AET and the same for the receiving antenna, receiving antenna is having again GR, effective aperture area is AER and receiving antenna is having a unit vector rho ER. So that this is the power generating at the transmitter is PT. So this is delivering to the antenna which is input to the antenna but it is by the transmission line. So here if we assume that this Z in is not equal to Z naught the some power will be reflected back to the transmitter and some power will be delivered to the load. So how much power will be delivered to the load is given by the reflection efficiency. Okay. So according to that we will calculate, so the reflection efficiency we know that the gamma t is equal to Z in minus Z naught divided by Z in plus Z naught, the reflection coefficient at the transmitter end. And similarly the reflection coefficient at the receiving end if we assume that this ZL is not equal to Z naught then this is gamma r is equal to ZL minus Z naught divided by ZL plus Z naught. And the distance between the transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna is suppose D. The distance between the transmitting antenna or the transmitter and the receiver is D. So how much power is delivered to the load that we have to calculate that is suppose denoted as PR. Okay. So 
if this is the power which is transmitted by the transmitter and uh, it is delivered by the transmission line so how much power will be delivered to the uh, input of the antenna is given by this is the pt power that is generated by the transmission and because the input impedance of the antenna is not matched with the characteristic impedance of the transmission line some power will be reflected back so the power that is transmitted by the transmission line will be input to the antenna and that is given by pt into 1 minus gamma t magnitude square so this much power will be input to the antenna and if there is a no loss in the transmission line there is no conduction loss or the material loss in the uh, antenna itself sorry not in the transmission line if there is no loss in the uh, antenna that is there is no loss in the material of the antenna that is there is no ohmic loss there is no conduction loss then whatever power you will give in the input that will be delivered to the antenna and that will be radiated by the antenna after multiplying with the gain of the antenna so the gain of the antenna transmitting antenna is gt so that is the power that is uh, radiated by the transmitting antenna okay now what will be uh, see what is happening is whatever power you are giving is at the input and you are transmitting is the output okay so for an, any antenna if you calculate the efficiency this is the output power divided by input power and as i told you that the output power you can calculate by input power and multiplying with the efficiency and the input power is the pt which is the power at the input and the overall efficiency is given by 1 minus gamma square into the transmitting antenna gain into ecd right so this is the power which is actually radiated by the antenna so the radiated power at the antenna is pt 1 minus gamma square gt ecd is actually equal to 1 why ecd is 1 because we are assuming that this antenna is having a conduction loss 0 ohmic loss 0 so the there is no loss that means the radiation efficiency is 1 because uh, the radiation loss rl is equal to 0 so the radiation resistance divided by the loss resistance plus radiation resistance is given by the radiation efficiency that is now equal to 1 so this will be now the power pt 1 minus gamma square and gt and this is the output power so that is the power which is radiated by this transmitting antenna so how much uh, power density at the distance d if i will ask you how much is the power density at distance d because the uh, we assume the antenna reflects uh, radiate in all the direction that means it forms a spherical symmetry and if it is forming a spherical symmetry then the power density at any distance power density at distance r is given by power that is the power in the numerator divided by area and area is the surface area of a sphere which is 4 pi d square so this is the power density at distance d now how much power it will receive the receiver will receive the power that is multiplied with the effective aperture area of the receiver effective aperture area of the receiver now this is the power which is received by the receiving antenna and this receiving antenna delivers the power in the load using this transmission line so again this load impedance is not equal to the characteristic impedance so whatever power will be coming to the load some part will be reflected and some part will be delivered to the load so how much power it will deliver to the load the transmission line will deliver to the load that is the power which is actually input to the transmission line and now 1 minus gamma r mod square will be the power which is delivered by the antenna at the uh, which is delivered by the transmission line at the load okay so the power received by the antenna is multiplied with the effective aperture area so this power is input to the transmission line and this transmission line will some part will be delivered to the load and some power will be reflected and the power that is transmitted by this transmission line is given by 1 minus gamma r square multiplied with the input power so this is the input power and that is multiplied with this and this is the total power delivered to the load that is the power received so if i arrange it properly then we can write it as pt into gt aer this is the effective aperture area of the receiving antenna and the effective aperture area can also be written as 
lambda square upon 4 pi into the receiving antenna, gain of the receiving antenna. So, this is 1 minus gamma t mod square and 1 minus gamma r into mod square and already the, in the denominator there is a 4 pi d square. So, this is 4 pi, this is 4 pi and this is d square. So, this is 4 pi d whole square and there is also lambda. So, this is pr is equal to pt into gt into gr into lambda upon 4 pi d whole square 1 minus gamma t mod square and 1 minus gamma r mod square. This will be the overall formula for the received power. So, this is the received power. Now, what is the role of this uh, unit vector of the transmitted electric field and the receiving electric field? So, as we have studied just before this lecture is the polarization loss factor. So, if the transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna has different polarization or different electric field polarization, then polarization loss factor is given by, then the polarization loss factor is given by rho E t unit vector dot product with rho E r whole square. So, this is the polarization loss factor. So, including if there is a polarization mismatch, if there is a polarization mismatch, then the received power P r is P t G t G r lambda upon 4 pi d whole square 1 minus gamma t mod square 1 minus gamma r mod square multiplied with polarization loss factor. So, this would be the formula if you consider all the losses except the conduction loss, polarization loss and the reflection loss. So, this will be the formula. And if there is perfectly, if there is no, there is no polarization mismatch, if there is no polarization mismatch and reflection from transmission line, if there is no polarization mismatch that means the they are perfectly matched in terms of polarization and there is no reflection that means uh, whatever you are giving in the input of the transmission line all will be delivered to the load. So, in that case the reflection from the transmission line is 0 and there is no polarization mismatch then this formula will become P r is equal to P t G t G r lambda upon 4 pi d whole square. So, this would be the formula if there is no loss because if there is no reflection that means the reflection coefficient is 0. So, this will be 0, this will be 0. So, this multiplication of these two is 1. So, after this if I write this is 0, if this is 0 then this is 1 and if it is polarization mass then PLF is also 1. So, the or multiplication of these three terms is 1. So, this would be the formula. So, this is important one. This is asked in gate previously two times and this formula is also very important because this is the two state form of the fresh transmission equation which is asked in gate only once. So, they can consider the polarization loss factor and can ask you for the receive power. They can consider this receiver uh, reflection coefficient also that they have given uh, when we will solve the question you will see uh, in the one of the question in the previous gate year questions you will see that there is was a uh, there was a question based on that reflection efficiency. So, that formula is very simple and that is very much easy to derive and the same method we will use while we will deriving the we will be deriving the radar range equation. So, whenever uh, this type of question is asked you can calculate the power density and then by multiplying with the area you can calculate the power. So, this is the uh, power at the receiver and in radar we have to calculate power again at the radar station. So, we will calculate the uh, power density again at the transmitter and we will get the 
received power in the radar station. So, uh, this is the idea and this is how we can derive the power received at the receiver in the load when we, we use the phase transmission equation along with all the efficiency, radiation efficiency and the reflection efficiency. If there is a conduction efficiency as well, that is uh, if there is a radiation efficiency you want to consider, that means if there is any loss in the uh, transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna, then what you have to do is you have to multiply, you have to multiply here with ECD of the transmitter side and at the receiver side you have to multiply here ECDT will be there and already you have to uh, here you have multiplied of the reflection uh, radiation efficiency of the transmitter then you have to multiply with the receiver also. So, this would be the formula if you consider the ECD of the transmitting antenna and ECDR of the receiving antenna so that will also be multiplied ok and if it is not present that means the efficiency is 1 that is 100%. Clear? So, if there is any loss, if there is any loss in the transmitting antenna and in the receiving antenna, then you have to consider the loss resistance of the transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna and that loss is denoted by the radiation efficiency and for that you have to multiply with the ECDT and ECDR. Here also it would be multiplied with this because one by one we had written everything. So, ECDT, ECDR will be multiplied for both and this will be the final answer and here also you can include this part. Generally, this part is considered as one because uh, already we have considered many type of uh, the uh, losses that is the reflection losses and polarization losses. So, up till now in the gate uh, they have not considered the conduction losses in phase transmission equation. But if it is given then you should not con confuse because you know how to derive the formula because I have told you the step by step procedure to derive the phase transmission equation. The transmitted power is Pt and this transmitted power is input to the transmission line. Then how much power will be delivered to the load of the transmission line that should be multiplied by the reflection efficiency. So, this is 1 minus gamma square and when it is transmitting by the antenna it should be multiplied with gain as well. So, this is gain. So, this is how we write the power radiated by the antenna. Power radiated by the antenna is input power and efficiency. So, in here if you consider this efficiency that is the radiation efficiency of the transmitting antenna. So, Pt 1 minus gamma t square Gt and the radiation efficiency of the transmitting antenna ok. Now, it is delivered to the load. So, it is delivered to the load. So, we are considering the power density at the receiver. So, power density at the receiver is divided by 4 pi d square. So, we have got the power per unit area, but we want to calculate the power at the receiver and we have got the power per unit area. So, this area should be cancelled. So, this area can be cancelled when you multiply with the area, but this time area of the receiver. So, area of the receiver is AER. So, after this, after this up to writing the fourth term and the fifth term, now we will multiply with the AER. Once you will multiply with the AER, you will go get the power which is input to the transmission line. Now, the power input to the transmission line you have got and if there is a loss in this uh, antenna also, in this receiving antenna also, then you have to multiply with ECDR. So, these two things we have done and now we have got the total power actually input to the transmission line of the receiver. So, this is the overall power input to the transmission line. Now, how much power will be delivered to this load? So, for that you have to multiply with the reflection efficiency of the receiver. So, now you multiplied with the reflection efficiency of the receiver. So, this is the total power which is received at the load of the receiver. So, these red lines are about the receiver end and all the blue ticks are about the transmitting end. So, after rearranging and considering the polarization loss factor, we will get our final expression of the received power and if there is no loss, no conduction loss, no polarization loss, no reflection efficiency, um, that means no reflection coefficient, then all the term will be 1 and you will get this Pt, Gt, Gr, lambda upon 4 pi d whole square. So, this is all about the phase transmission equation. Our next topic is polarization loss factor. So, in this topic we are going to discuss about the polarization of incident wave that is incidenting on an antenna and the polarization of antenna. So, uh, it has been seen that 
when uh, the polarization of the incident wave and the polarization of the antenna is different then there is some loss of power so that is why uh, we study about the polarization loss factor which actually tells us how much power is actually lost because of the polarization mismatch so uh, you can write few points first and then we will see how do we calculate the polarization loss factor so please write in general in general polarization of receiving antenna in general polarization of receiving antenna will not be same polarization of receiving antenna will not be same as polarization of incident wave so polarization of receiving antenna will not be same as polarization of incident wave this is commonly known as polarization mismatch because the polarization of these two are different so that is why it is known as polarization mismatch the amount of power extracted the amount of power extracted by the antenna from the incoming signal the amount of power extracted from the antenna from the incoming signal will not be maximum because of polarization loss will not be maximum because of polarization loss so this is the uh, actually uh, the idea behind the polarization loss factor and what is actually the polarization loss factor so uh, you have understood that if the polarization is different then there will be some loss of power and that is calculated by polarization loss factor okay now now you write assuming the electric field of incoming wave let's write assuming assuming that electric field of the incoming wave assuming that the electric field of the incoming wave is denoted by ei is equal to ei its magnitude and rho w cap where where this rho w cap is unit vector of the wave so the electric field of incoming wave which is incident on an antenna is suppose denoted by this vector ei so this is the vector ei and this is the unit vector of the incoming wave unit vector of the wave and the polarization of the polarization of the electric field the polarization of electric field of the receiving antenna polarization of electric field of receiving antenna is denoted by suppose ea vector this is the electric field of antenna it is ea that is the magnitude and rho a so where this rho a is unit vector or the polarization vector okay so there are two waves whenever you calculate the polarization loss factor there will be a two waves or you can say there will be two fields because between that we will calculate the polarization loss so the incoming wave is having the polarization uh, that is given by this expression and the receiving antenna is having the polarization that is given by this expression so in this case the polarization loss factor is defined as polarization loss 
factor is defined is defined based on the polarization of based on the polarization of the antenna in its transmitting mode is PLF equal to that is nothing but the unit vector of these two waves that is rho w dot rho a magnitude square. So, the polarization loss factor is the dot product of the unit vectors of these two waves and its magnitude whole square. So, this is defined as polarization loss factor. Now, suppose if I draw the two unit vectors, suppose I draw the two unit vectors like this, suppose this is the direction of rho w and because there are two vectors, so it will be having, uh, because uh, the, these are the two vectors, so there will be some angle between these two because we are calculating the dot product. So, let us say the angle between these two vectors are xi and these are the unit vectors, so the magnitude of this unit vector will be 1. So, if we calculate the PLF, so this is nothing but the magnitude of this which is 1, the magnitude of this that is also 1 and the cos of angle between them which is xi, so whole square. So, the polarization loss factor you can also define if you know the angle between these two vectors. So, this is cos of xi magnitude square. So, that is our polarization loss factor where xi is the angle between these two unit vectors. So, the relative alignment of the polarization of the incoming wave and of the antenna is this. So, what will happen if when we say that they are perfectly matched? So, if the polarization is perfectly matched, then the PLF is 1 the polarization loss factor is 1 that is known as perfectly matched, perfectly polarization matched ok. And uh, if the antenna is polarized matched, its PLF will be unity and the antenna will extract maximum power from the incoming wave. So, in this case antenna will extract maximum power from the incoming wave. Okay. So, PLF should be 1 for perfect matching. You should not consider that the PLF is 0 that means there is perfectly matched because in general uh, we consider that the reflection coefficient is 0 that means the reflection will be 0. But in this case the, if the PLF is 0 that is polarization mismatch. So, if the PLF is 0 then it is polarization mismatch. Polarization mismatch. and that is perfectly mismatch ok. So, these are the uh, polarization loss factor and uh, let us take one example. So, that you can understand how to apply this formula in any question. So, the first uh, the question is suppose the electric field of a linearly polarized electromagnetic wave. So, the question is the electric field of a linearly polarized EM wave is given by E naught A x cap E to the power minus J k z. It is given that that is linearly polarized and that is the electric field of incoming wave is incident upon a linearly polarized antenna 
that is incident upon a linearly polarized antenna whose electric field is given by so antenna is having the electric field that is given by ax cap plus ay cap and this is also e naught okay so if we see that what is the unit vector here so the unit vector of the incident wave is the ax only because it is directly given as the vector unit vector there is no another term so this is the unit vector ax and the unit vector of the incoming wave is the unit vector of this term so unit vector of this term is nothing but this is the vector and divided by its magnitude which is root 2 because we know that how to write the unit vector unit vector is nothing but the vector divided by its magnitude so this is the vector and its magnitude is root over 1 square plus 1 square and e naught so e naught e naught will get cancelled and we we'll get root 2 okay so if i calculate the polarization loss vector which is nothing but the dot product of these two and whole square this is polarization loss factor so it will be equal to ax dot ax plus ay divided by root 2 whole square so if i calculate it so this is 1 upon root 2 whole square which is equal to 1 by 2 so the polarization loss factor is 1 by 2 and if you want to calculate it in db polarization loss factor in db is 10 log plf and it is 10 log 0 0.5 and it is equal to minus 3 db approximately okay so the polarization loss factor can be calculated in this way so this is the incoming wave this is also linearly polarized this is also linearly polarized but the vector is in such a way that the polarization loss factor is not equal to 1 because we can think that if the incoming wave is linearly polarized the antenna is also linearly polarized then there will be no mismatch okay but still we are having some mismatch because of the electric field of the antenna and the electric field of the plane wave are different so in this way we calculate the polarization loss factor and we will see how do we apply in the question when we solve the workbook question and also uh, when uh, how the formula gets modified when we include this term uh, the freeze transmission equation how do we consider the plf in the freeze transmission equation etc